Tiffany Calvert, Family Consumer Science Extension Agent here at the Extension Office. I'm Angie Hudnall, Registered Nurse at Purdue Farms. And we have a special guest <laughs> today, April Peach. She is the assistant here, the Family Consumer Science Assistant at the Extension Office. And she does amazing things. And today she's going to share with us her own um, Alfredo recipe. So this is a homemade Alfredo sauce. And so tell us about this recipe. So when you're it's super quick, it's a fast meal. Um, you start out with one stick of butter and you put it in your pan with a spoonful of garlic. Um, you can get the already minced ready to go or you can chop your own. Um, you just saute that up until you get the base there. Once that's done, you're going to use this whole container. If you buy the large one, you're just using half of that. But so that is heavy whipping cream, right? Yes. So how long did you saute your garlic? Just until it gets like a little bit brown? Just a little bit brown. And you don't want to scorch it. It'll scorch fast. So you, you got to watch it. It doesn't take long at all. So then you're going to add your heavy whipping cream. Add the whole thing. Again, this is the smaller one, 16 ounces. Um, and then you can buy it in a larger container. You will just use half of that. And so while you're cooking it, um, you're going to cook this for just a little bit, probably at least five minutes. It's going to bubble. It's going to boil kind of. And you really want to whisk it really hard to blend the butter and the milk together. So you're gonna whisk it. If you don't whisk it, once it's done, it'll start to separate again and the butter will separate. So you gotta whisk it really hard, you cook it, um, and let it boil. And once it's boiled and you've whisked really well, then you're gonna go ahead and add Parmesan cheese. Now you can use any kind of Parmesan cheese, um, the powder or these are actually like the shaved, um, shaved slices. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to heat it, and then we're going to add this. And, and you're going to add the whole container of the Parmesan? Possibly. We're going to find out. Um, you just add it till it's the thickness that you want and it's creamy. Um, it depends on the cheese as to how much you put in. Um, so you'll cook it down and then you'll add your cheese at the very end. It'll thicken up and then you pour it over your noodles. So are your heat, or is it low, medium, or high that you're putting on? I would say medium, you know, if you want to get a boil, you want to get a boil while you're cooking the sauce. Um, so to boil, you whisk it really hard and you keep that going, you watch it, you know, it's getting where you feel like it's sticking on the bottom, then you got to turn it down. Um, but just boil and whisk and then turn it down, add your cheese, stir that in, and it's all done. So the key is not to walk away from it, right? No, and it's really fast. <laughs> so you, don't, you don't walk away because it's going to be done in no time. So super fast. You can already have your pasta going. Start this, and then your pasta will be done, your sauce will be done, and you're ready to go. Okay, so your pasta now, are you using, is this your pasta that you use? Um, you can buy fettuccine. You can use any pasta you have in your house. My preference is fettuccine. Whole wheat is your best choice. Um, but fettuccine noodles to me taste really well with the fettuccine sauce, um, Alfredo sauce. It just kind of blends together and, and kind of makes you feel like there's more substance there. Um, the thinner noodles, typically we put that with spaghetti sauce. I guess certain noodles are flavor and go well with certain sauces. All right, so these are whole wheat uh, noodles that we're using today. And I'm super excited about this because this is going to be our lunch. Um, so I can't wait. Um, I wanted to show you an alternative to pasta would be your spaghetti squash. And you know, Angie, that yes. I love this stuff. Yes, it's very I good prefer too. to feed my family a vegetable versus a grain. Um, and so I wanted to show you some pictures in case you're not familiar with this. This is awesome. So this is what the spaghetti squash looks like. And all in the world you do is to cut it in half um, and sometimes it's really difficult to cut in half because it is a very hard vegetable. But once it's cut in half, then you're going to have the interior of the spaghetti squash stringy, seedy, like the interior of a pumpkin. And you're just going to spoon that out, all the strings and the seeds. Just like you do a cantaloupe, right? Yep. And then you are going to bake that in the oven for at least 45 minutes on 
350, 375, depending on your oven. And then once it is cooled off and finished, um, you are going to take a fork and scrape it out, the meat of the vegetable, and it is going to be really stringy, hence how it got its name, spaghetti squash. Okay. And so, um, actually what I do for my kids a lot of times is I, I'll mix half spaghetti squash and half pasta. They seem okay. to like that a lot better, um, and it goes a lot further because, you know, I like leftovers at my home. Yes. <laughs> I really like leftovers in my home because that's one night of not doing much in the kitchen. So, yeah. Um, so, a few other things that we wanted to show you is uh, how to cook asparagus. Because when we went to the grocery store, I picked up asparagus and I yes, told you I wanted to show really you uh, how to cook them. The biggest thing, the biggest mistake that people make when cooking asparagus is overcooking it. If you've ever eaten asparagus and it was chewy and stringy, mm -hmm. it's because they overcooked it. What about the woody part? The, the woody part, um, I'm cutting the end of the stems off um, about an inch to get rid of that really hard okay. woodiness. So then you're flavor. not gonna have that. I know a lot of people say they don't like yeah. asparagus. They complain about that end part and they don't know. Yeah, they, they don't know to cut it off. Yeah, uh, because the, the top part of the plant is where you're going to get um, your flavor that you want and it's going to be more tender. Mm -hmm. So just about an inch is all I'm cutting off. I don't like to waste anything. And I prefer to roast my asparagus in the oven. Um, I do as well. That's steaming it on top of the stove often leads to chewy asparagus, and I just simply don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, and so all in the world I'm going to do is take a cookie sheet, line it with tin foil, spread my asparagus out on it, and what I have here... And this is super easy, like you get home from work, you got this ready, you just throw it in the oven, and you get your kids ready, get the homework done, and this stuff is cooking, and your supper's going to be done. Oh, I, mean, I yeah. love this. I cook a lot of things in the oven. You know, if I was at home and, and we had homework to tent, you know, contend to, then I would also roast maybe some potatoes or another vegetable right in there on another cookie sheet at the same time. I'll do this and with the chicken. chicken. So chicken and I put the everything, all the, the seasonings I put on that, mm -hmm. I put on my chicken as well. Yep. So what I have here is a lemon and I'm going to squeeze that in here because I'm actually going to flavor my asparagus, my roasted asparagus with lemon, a coarse salt, and grapeseed oil. And the reason why I'm doing the lemon first is because when you squeeze it, often um, you get the seeds down in there. Yes. And so I can pick the seeds out yes. after I do this. And I don't waste the extra part of the lemon. I'm actually going to put that to the side and throw it down in a glass of water. Perfect. There's still enough flavor there to, to yeah. flavor your water with. And you can you could even if you're not getting ready to do a glass of water then you can throw those in a baggie straight yeah, in the freezer sure. pull it out throw it in your water later get these seeds out and lemon just is excellent with asparagus clean and fresh it is the flavors mix really well and as far as the amount <laughs> It just depends on the amount of asparagus that you have. Mm -hmm. I'm using one lemon, and then I'm going to use about the same amount of oil. Now, can you tell me a little bit about this grapeseed oil? I've not seen this. Of course, there's like a blue million types of oils. Okay. Um, when shopping for an oil, you want to make sure, especially if you're trying to choose a healthier oil and you're using an oil that you're not familiar with, you need to make sure that somewhere on the front or the back, or maybe you have to look it up yourself, but it should tell you what um, temperature the oil is good for. Um, there's some oils that you can only cook at a low temperature in, um, before it starts to smoke too much. Right. And then other oils are for higher temperatures. Grapeseed oil is for a higher temperature, so I just prefer to go with that. But there's several other options that you can go with. Now, if you don't have the grapeseed oil, can you use the olive oil? You could. I've used olive oil before. Yeah, avocado.
avocado oil. There's really like several. Now what is this there. stuff over here that you just put in there? Um, I just put some salt and pepper. So I've got lemon oil, salt and pepper. What kind of salt is this? Though? Um, this is Himalayan salt. Okay, okay. So this yes. is a it's a natural salt. It is a natural salt. Um, I personally like the color. <laughs> I know that um, it is natural and it's coarse. Um, and I prefer to cook with a coarse salt. Yes, um, you know, a lot of times when I'm cooking, I don't even put the salt in it until after the fact. Um, with this recipe, I usually put it in before. Okay. You may have to open this for me. My yes, hands are slick. And then we are going to put some Parmesan cheese in there. And I love this brand. It's, it's all natural and it's already pre-done for you. Yes. And you can tell that this natural Parmesan cheese kind of so clumps I together. Can smell it. Over but there. it smells like cheese. Man. It, it's really amazing. That's made with real milk. That's not your cheese product. That's a cheese. Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a fork and mix it up. Look at that texture. Mm. This is going to. It's going to be Bread good. on that asparagus really well. It's going to cover those greens See good. See that uh, brush there? Okay. Brush it for you? Yeah, you sure can. It's super easy. So tell easy. us how we're cooking these again. Um, did I put garlic in that? No. No. Let's go ahead and add some garlic. Um, and garlic is, uh, I like to cook with garlic like a lot. A lot. And we like garlic. So the amount of garlic that you put in this recipe is totally by preference, but the lemon and the oil actually is the base of this recipe. Um, after that, then you can just kind of add anything that you want. Oh, this smells so good. It is. And uh, we may have to roll the asparagus around a little bit if we feel like it's not getting on the back side. And if we have enough uh, mixture, This goes really good with chicken. So this is actually going to go in a preheated oven, um, 425 for 15 minutes. That's um, so it's really quick. Mm -hmm. So a higher temperature, 15 minutes. Look at that. That's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Awesome. Of course, asparagus is actually really good when you wrap the bacon around Ooh, it as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, but that, that would only be if you were not having any other meat for dinner. Okay. We don't want to overdo it on our protein. And so, if you want to put that in the oven and yes, set the time for 15 minutes, that would be fantastic. All right. So the next recipe that I want to show you is the cabbage steaks. And. Uh, Angie, have you been to the, the Beaver Dam Community Farmer's Market lately? I have not been lately. Okay. Because we've got softball tournaments on the weekends. Yes. But I have been able to, um, there's one of the um, vendors yes. that delivers boxes. And I got a variety box yesterday for 20 bucks. And I'm going to have vegetables for all week, and they're fresh. I mean, when they brought it, I was like, the whole office was like, what have you got there? <laughs> yeah, so they delivered it to you, right? They delivered it right to my work. Yes. yes. Oh, it was so good. And so last night we had um, green onions and a black eyed peas and fried cabbage, well, sauteed cabbage. And uh, it's really, really good. And tonight, my husband's fixing spaghetti with the green peppers in it and some more of the onions. It's really good. And this morning when I made myself a smoothie, I had to throw a couple of blueberries in, in there. This is uh, my strawberry, banana, pineapple juice. I was out of the avocado, so. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just, um, I'm going to spread a little bit of oil. Hold that brush go. Right here. Okay. I'm going to spread a little bit of oil down on my tin foil just so that my cabbage steaks don't stick. So um, when my husband asks what we're having for dinner and if I say steak, I have to, he, uh, <laughs> he has to ask, are we really having steak or are we having cabbage steaks? He likes them both, but um, 
And all in the world I've done to this cabbage, I washed it, cut the end off of it, and then I cut mine into about anywhere between a fourth to an inch thick. I don't waste any of this because the, the pieces that fall off, I just eat raw cabbage. It's excellent. Even mm -hmm. my three-year-old loves it. He ate so much one night, I thought for sure he was going to make himself sick. Um, so, get some more pieces here. The cabbage is so good. I remember growing up, uh, my mom would boil cabbage, and I thought I hated cabbage because of it. Um, but then we come across people grilling it and sauteing it, and it's, it's you just don't know there's more than raw cabbage you can fix it at. Yes. Look at this. this is a big part of your meal right here yes. and very very healthy for you this cabbage is big enough where it's probably going to do two nights worth of supper yeah so. all right there we go and we are just going to brush actually you could hand me that same um container over there yes. that we made the other one in um, I've never put Parmesan cheese on it, but I'm sure it won't hurt anything. Um, I just use a lot of garlic, about two teaspoons at least, and my grapeseed oil. Yes. And I just brush that on there. And then you're going to um, cook it in the oven, depending on how much time I have, um, 350 to 400. Um, and I cook mine until the outside edges start to get really brown and crisp mm -hmm. um, because that's how we enjoy ours. Matter of fact, we usually fight over the brownest pieces. Oh, yeah. So well, this would be good with some Creole, too. Yes, if you want it to you can spice it, it up. any way you want to. Mm -hmm. And this is how I cook um, cabbage steaks. And really, I don't put salt or pepper on it until after it comes out. My kids, um, often eat it without any salt or pepper, so mm -hmm. that's why I don't add it until yeah. later. Yeah. There's no point in adding that if you don't need it. If you don't need it. Exactly. You've got all these fresh seasonings that's giving you all your flavor. Yes. So this is super fast. To me, this is even quicker and easier than trying to steam it or Absolutely. anything on top of the stove. Yes. And you're going to get so much flavor by roasting it and waiting until it turns brown. If you are trying to cut back on the salt and you need more flavor than garlic and oil, then try to find one of the Mrs. Dash salt-free salt seasoning. They have like 10. They're um, awesome. And so that will flavor it. You know, even if you just wanted to put garlic powder on there, say you didn't have any minced garlic at home, um, you can do that as well. So, I'm going to move this over to the side and we'll bag up my extra cabbage because we are not going to waste that. All right, so now I wanted to show you we had purchased a fresh pineapple and I wanted to show you my pineapple pourer. That is absolutely genius. Um, we eat a lot more fresh pineapple because of this device right here. Man, even though because I eat a lot of pineapple. Yeah, it is, it is completely possible to eat fresh pineapple without this. I just ended up um, having more waste when, when I did that. that. Um, but remember to smell the bottom of your pineapple. If you can smell the pineapple, it's good and ripe. And oh, then yeah. you can also test it by pulling out the top part, you know. If it pulls out relatively easy, you're good to go. Now, if it pulled out like super easy, you might want to put that pineapple back because <laughs> it's overripe. 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 So, all in the world, I'm going to do is cut off the top part. If you're ever making a fruit tray, like to take to an event, this right here in the center of your tray be pretty. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And it's free. I'm all about that. Alright, there we go. So the center part with the teeth on it um, is where the core is going to go. So, so most people don't know that you see that. It's, 
the center, core. there is a core, and you have mm -hmm. to get that out. So a lot of people have not seen a pineapple exactly. cut open like that. Um, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so you're just going to twist it. That is so cool. And you don't throw away the core. You flavor your water with it. Very and good. it's super easy. I mean, like, you know. I love that. Because I was like peeling and then chopping. <laughs> well, when you take a knife and you try to cut off the outside edges, yeah. you're, you're either getting too much of the meat and you're wasting yes. or not enough and then you have those hard pieces. I love that. Yeah. So you should be able to feel when you reach the bottom, the release. I see. Pull it up. Oh my gosh. No. Save the juice. Exactly. <laughs> I've even like look at that. I've even tilted the cut, cutting board up. You could be on the beach. <laughs> you put fruit down there. Put in there. Yeah. Yeah. And so look at here. Oh, that smells so, so good. So in order to get the core out, sometimes I have to take like the end of a wooden spoon or something and and get it out of there. But don't throw it away. Flavor your water with it. It's amazing. Check this out. Wow, I love it. It's already in spirals. It. I love it. Which is good for decoration as well. It is, Eat but I can tell you when I core a pineapple at home, um, I better have three or four of them because my kids will have this eat. one eat before yeah. I can even get the next one um, peeled. And you know, pineapple has that bromelain in it, and bromelain is really, really good for your skin. Um, we have people that are older and they have, they complain of the skin being very, very thin or bruising easy or things like that. This has that bromelain in it, mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that heals that. Yes. Oh my gosh. Fresh, not that fresh. is amazing. It's like, if you've tried canned pineapple and you didn't like it, try this. This is nothing mm. like it. Nothing like it. It's and amazing. It's like butter and yeah. it just melts. And let's just say, um, you know, you're cutting a whole pineapple and it's just you at home. Um, that's mm. perfectly fine. And then you need to get a cookie sheet with some wax paper. Throw these out on the cookie sheet and freeze them. Um, mm. My kids like them frozen just as much Make as they like them fresh. Just make your smoothies with them or just eat them frozen. Yes. It's like the best natural, simple popsicle that you can get. Um, so that was pretty love, easy. Love so if you don't have a pineapple core, you need to get one. Um, so Angie's already said what is in her smoothie. And so it must, it's just neat. We did not plan this. Every one of us <laughs> showed up with a smoothie this yeah. morning. And they're all different colors. Um, mine's the green one, Angie's is the pink one, and April's is this dark purple one. And so on, in, in mine, what I started off with was a half of a cucumber, um, a whole carrot, and massive amounts of spinach. I mean, like, I know I probably grabbed four handfuls at least. So you got your vegetables today. I did. And for breakfast, I mean, how many people can say, I had a carrot, a half a cucumber, six handfuls of spinach for breakfast. Right. There's not very many people that can right. say that. And so I added enough water to be able to blend it. And then after that blends down, it kind of, there's enough room to add even more spinach. <laughs> and so that's what I did. So all that iron. And then, um, frozen peaches that I had left over oh, from oh. vacation. And okay. so the peaches were not real sweet. And so I went ahead and added about two tablespoons of raw honey. And so that, and chia seeds. And that's what I blended okay. up. And that's so April, what, what did you bring? Mine that I fixed for breakfast <laughs> um, was, I had spinach was the base. And then wild blueberries, pineapple, a banana, frozen banana. Um, all the other fruit was frozen. Raspberries, just a few of those. I put chia seeds, I put fiber, probiotics, and coconut oil. Ooh. There's what I was forgetting. Coconut <laughs> oil. Yeah. I knew there was something else in that. <laughs> now, don't you have a sauce over here for us? I do. It's done. You know, really, I was thinking, Angie, out of all the things that we have um, showed folks today, this really makes a complete meal because yeah. we have Alfredo with our noodles and our vegetable mm -hmm. um, because I really plan on eating mine today with half pasta and half spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have cabbage steaks, 
We have asparagus, which is two additional vegetables. Yeah. You know, really, who said that you can't have 10 vegetables That's right. for lunch? That's right. Um, <laughs> and then we have pineapple as our dessert, our fruit. So we really Very have healthy. a complete meal. Very healthy meal. So while I was cooking this, I noticed that it comes to a boiling point pretty fast, so you got to watch it, like we said. Um, and once it turns to that rapid boil, you can go ahead and turn it down and keep it boiling on a simmer um, and boil that. Add the cheese. I added about three-fourths of that container. Um, but it's, it's with every different Parmesan you use, it's going to be different. So you want it to come to this thickness. Before you actually add the cheese, it should already be creamy with the milk and the butter. Um, it should be thickening. And then you add the cheese and it gets thicker. Um, and you add your spices at that point. I added pepper, um, crushed red pepper, and basil this time. And then you can top it with spinach, sauteed spinach, sauteed onions, um, steamed broccoli, and you can put chicken on the top that you sauteed off to the side if you want. To. This looks really good. It looks like a good gravy. Yes. And so <laughs> earlier you were saying about leftovers. If we had, because I'm all about leftovers, you know me, I would like double the batch just to have leftovers. How do you reheat the leftovers? Okay, so because it's got a, it's a milk and a butter base, it does like to separate, but that's why whisking it is so important. A lot of times if you whisk it really good, it won't separate. But if it does separate, you store it in the refrigerator, the next day you get it out to eat it. Um, it may be separated a little bit when you go to heat it up. It may just turn to oil, um, butter. But go ahead and just add a little bit more milk or a little more heavy cream, and it'll just whisk back in it's ready. Just heat it up on the stove again the next day. So it's really good. And you don't have to worry about the preservatives or anything in there. Yeah, you know You're exactly like, what's yes, in that sauce yes. because you put it in there. That's right. what I love, I love this it. idea. Yes. yes. All right. So that's what we have for you today. Um, be sure to um, comment below our videos to let us know if you have any additional questions. And also, let us know if you've tried this at home. If you liked it, if it's a new uh, family favorite, uh, let us know those things. So we uh, hope that you've learned something, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.